Thanks, Tucker, and welcome to Hannity. And this is a Fox News alert tonight, exclusively right here on this show. I can confirm from multiple high-ranking DOJ sources who have now confirmed to me directly the Attorney General of the United States has not recused himself from the Uranium One issue. Now, that is huge news tonight. We'll have more on this breaking news with Greg Jarrett in just a minute. Plus, we are following several developing news scandals tonight, all centered around one person, Hillary Clinton, and that ruthless political machine that mowed down anyone who threatened her quest to be the leader of the free world. First, we have new evidence that Hillary Clinton rigged the DNC during the primary battle, and she basically stole that primary from Bernie Sanders and the nomination. Now, finally, multiple prominent Democrats are speaking out against Clinton's corruption inside the Democratic Party. And also tonight, new developments surrounding Hillary Clinton's dirty dossier when she bought and paid for Russian lies about Donald Trump during the election. Tonight, we will lay out exactly what laws she may have broken and why it is now time to start a formal investigation into her corrupt practices. Now President Trump is even calling out the Justice Department for not investigating what could be widespread Russian collusion within the Clinton campaign and the Democratic Party. All of that and more in tonight's very important Friday breaking news opening monologue. Hillary Clinton, she has been caught red-handed rigging the Democratic primary in her favor. This according to former interim DNC chair Donna Brazil, who says she found, quote, proof that the Clinton campaign colluded with the DNC to demolish Senator Sanders. He didn't have a chance. Now, according to Brazil, who has a new book coming out next week, Clinton controlled the Democratic Party's finances, strategy, even had a final say on staffing, all while poor socialist Bernie Sanders tried in vain to take on the Clinton machine. Now, Brazil wrote an op-ed for Political Magazine entitled Inside Hillary Clinton's Secret Takeover of the DNC. She wrote, quote, I had promised Bernie when I took the helm of the Democratic National Committee after the convention that I would get to the bottom of whether Hillary Clinton's team had rigged the nomination process as a cache of emails stolen by Russian hackers and posted online had suggested. I'd had my suspicions from the moment I walked in the door at the DNC a month or so earlier based on the leaked emails. But who knew if some of them might have been forged? I needed to have solid proof, and so did Bernie. Brazil later goes on to explain her findings. She wrote, quote, Debbie was not a good manager. She hadn't been very interested in controlling the parties that she let Clinton headquarters in Brooklyn do as it desired so she didn't have to inform the party officers how bad the situation was, how much control Brooklyn had, and for how long was still something I had been trying to uncover for the last few weeks. By September the 7th, the day I called Bernie, I had found my proof and it broke my heart. Now, that news should disturb every single voter in America. Now, even some of Hillary Clinton's former comrades in the Democratic Party, they are now turning on the twice-failed presidential candidate. Watch them. Earlier today, we heard from Donna Brazil that what many people had suspected for a long time has turned out to be true. The DNC secretly chose their nominee over a year before the primary elections even occurred. This is a real problem. But what we've got to do as Democrats now is we've got to hold this party accountable. This is a test for Tom Perez. It was rigged. Now, we reached out to Clinton's communications director, Nick Merrill, for comments about Brazil's claims. Now, he directed us to the statement that he wrote on Twitter. That reads in part, crux of all of this bluster about DNC and HFA is Sanders didn't have the same opportunities to work with the DNC simply are not true. They opted not to. Oh, really? You're telling me Bernie Sanders had the same opportunities to control staffing and strategy and money and the head of the DNC at the time that lifelong Clinton ally Debbie Wasserman Schultz? Give us a break. Hillary had a secret signed contract. So what they just told you is a lie. And by the way, countless Democrats must have known that Hillary had rigged the system. And those are the people that stood by and said and did nothing. And then there's poor Bernie Sanders. He knew now that the system was rigged, and yet he still supported Hillary Clinton in a general election. Where is his backbone? 
And today, Nancy Pelosi dodging questions when reporters tried to ask her about all of this. This is the highest level of corruption we have seen in our lifetime. Every single person that voted for Hillary Clinton, you should be outraged, especially those that voted in the primary for Bernie Sanders. You were ripped off. This was a stolen election. It's a massive scandal. It is now dividing the Democratic Party. This will haunt Hillary Clinton for the rest of her life. Now, this smoking gun story broke just yesterday. But if you turned in to your network news broadcast last night, you wouldn't even know that this story existed. Newsbusters reports today not one single second of coverage was dedicated to this story, not on ABC, CBS, and definitely not on NBC. Now, this shouldn't surprise us. They're all driven by radical left-wing ideology and politics. They're supposed to be fair and balanced. They report the facts. Now, this is called a bias of omission, and it's the media's favorite trick to bury stories that look bad for their friends, their comrades, the Democratic Party. But unlike them, on this show, we have promised we will expose truth, and we do it every night. Now, tonight, turn to another shocking revelation from Donna Brazil. Not only is she calling out the corrupt Clinton machine, but she also had a few choice words for former President Obama and how he nearly bankrupted the DNC. She wrote, quote, Obama left the party $24 million in debt, $15 million in bank debt, and more than $8 million owed to vendors after the 2012 campaign and had been paying that off very slowly. Obama's campaign was not scheduled to pay it off until 2016. Now, months after being corrupted by Hillary Clinton and bankrupted by Barack Obama, the fledgling DNC is facing yet another scandal, this time over a staffing email first obtained by the Daily Wire from a Democratic technology manager. Now, this email encourages staffers to look for candidates for some open positions. However, the manager then goes on to write this. I personally would prefer that you not forward literally straight white males since they're already in the majority. Wow. Now, we reached out to the DNC and the person who wrote the email for comment. Shocking. Well, we haven't heard back. This is just one more example of the Democratic Party. They, they pretend that they're an inclusive party for everybody, all while actively now proven discrimination against people. And also tonight, new developments in the real Russia collusion story. And, of course, I'm talking about the anti-Trump Russian dossier bought and paid for, we now know, by the Clinton campaign and created by a former foreign spy using false Russian intelligence, all designed by Hillary Clinton, her campaign, to use false Russian intelligence to now steal the general election, just like she stole the primary from Bernie. And that's not all. The Clinton campaign funneled the funding of this document through a third-party source in order to cover their tracks. But Hillary Clinton, she wants all of us to think this is a non-story because the dossier didn't come out until after the election. Watch this. From my perspective, it didn't come out before the election, as we all know. And it's part of what happens uh, in a campaign where you get information that may or may not be useful and you try to make sure anything you put out into the public arena is accurate and right. so this thing didn't come out until after the election and it's still being uh, evaluated it was used by democrats and people in the media her statement is just not true it is a lie on november 1st i'll give you one example 2016 only days before the election david corn left winger he had a lot to say on msnbc about the former spy christopher Steele, and of course this trump dossier with salacious lies about donald trump watch this i met this former uh, senior intelligence officer who's really an expert and specialist in Russian counterintelligence for a intelligence service that we all would respect and learned that he had been sending very detailed memos to the FBI throughout much of the summer uh, based on his own work that he did with Russian sources that was uh, indicating that there had been a Russian operation to for a couple of years now to co-op and cultivate Donald Trump. Okay, it just blows Hillary Clinton's comments totally out of the water. But to steal a line from Hillary herself, oh, what difference at this point does it make? Her campaign still funded a former spy to put together sketchy, false Russian intelligence in order to smear the character of Donald Trump and influence an election. 
and influence the American people. And by the way, according to a brand new report in The Daily Caller, the law firm that Clinton used to covertly fund this dossier, Perkins Coy, was also responsible for helping the DNC avoid an FBI investigation after their servers were hacked. Now, I wonder who Debbie Wasserman Schultz got that law firm recommendation from. How is it that Hillary Clinton, think about this, how does she delete 33,000 subpoenaed emails, bleach bit, acid wash the servers, and then, of course, use a hammer on Blackberries and iPhones? And why is it Debbie Wasserman Schultz? What's going on here? She does the same thing. She has an IT guy with busted up hard drives in his garage. And then the whole thing with the police and the laptop. I'm telling you, there is so much evidence. What is wrong with the Democrats? How do they get to continue to obstruct justice? I'm telling you, we are only starting to touch the surface here. This is one of the corrupt, most corrupt scandals that you've ever seen. And it's more than just bad optics. According to Fox News, legal analyst Greg Jarrett, who will join us in a few minutes, Hillary Clinton, others in her campaign may have broken serious election laws. You can see them up on the side of your screen right now. And then, of course, there's the Uranium One scandal. Now, that put, of course, our national security at risk for their benefit. When Hillary Clinton was one of, what, nine people to approve the sale of a North American uranium producer to, let's see, the hostile regime of Russia, the bad actor Vladimir Putin, giving 20 percent of our uranium to Russia when we don't have enough uranium, we have to import uranium. Hillary did this all while Bill Clinton. He got a huge payout from Moscow. The Clinton Global Initiative got huge donations up to $145 million for people associated with the Uranium One deal. And according to Greg Jarrett, Clinton may have broken multiple fraud and bribery laws, including wire fraud, mail fraud, and many others. And let's not forget about Hillary Clinton's email server scandal. Remember? Mishandled, national secrets, top secret, special access program, confidential information, all top secret while she was serving as Secretary of State. Well, there she may have broken multiple laws as well. These are very serious crimes. They must be investigated by our Justice Department, and the Clintons must finally be held accountable for their actions. Now, we'll talk to Greg Jarrett and others in a few minutes to break all of this down. Meanwhile, the president rightly is now calling out the Justice Department for not investigating the Russia collusion story within the Clinton campaign and the Democratic Party. Here's the president from earlier. I'm really not involved with the Justice Department. I'd like to let it run itself. But honestly, they should be looking at the Democrats. They should be looking at Podesta and all of that dishonesty. They should be looking at a lot of things. And a lot of people are disappointed in the Justice Department, including me. Now, the president continued to air his frustration with the Justice Department and on a local radio station. Let's listen in. You know, the saddest thing is that because I'm the president of the United States, I am not supposed to be involved with the Justice Department. I'm not supposed to be involved with uh, the FBI. I'm not supposed to be doing the kind of things that I would love to be doing. And I'm very frustrated by it. Now, the president is right. Where is the investigation into Uranium One? Here is some good news. As I have confirmed at the top of the program exclusively, multiple high-ranking DOJ sources, DOJ sources have confirmed directly to me that the attorney general has not recused himself from the Uranium One issue. That is huge news tonight. Now, where is the investigation into the Clinton takeover of the DNC? Where is the investigation into the Clinton-funded fake Russian news so-called dossier with lies and salacious materials to propagandize the American people before an election? So we need to know, where is the Justice Department on all this? Will there be equal justice under the law, as we have been saying we need in this country? And also, according to an interview with Cheryl Atkinson, which will air this weekend, President Trump believes that this Russia investigation will result in him being proven innocent. Finally, I want to end with some good news tonight, which, by the way, you will never hear in the mainstream media because all they care about is delegitimizing this presidency of Donald Trump. All they talk about is Russia, Russia, Russia for a year with no evidence. Right now, we are getting the best economic news we have had in a long, long time. Something, by the way, I was never able to say during President Obama's administration.
Now, since President Trump took office in January, our economy has taken off. In October, 261,000 new jobs created, with manufacturing jobs adding 24,000. Unemployment now is at a 17-year low. Consumer confidence, a 17-year high. And over a million fewer Americans are relying on food stamps, the best numbers in over seven years. The homeowner uh, rate in the last quarter has risen, and more people are in the workforce than, say, seven years ago. Wow. And two years ago, President Trump, he promised to make our economy great. That's exactly what is happening, and that's only by getting rid of burdensome regulation. Hopefully Congress will now step up and do their job.